So this video might be too graphic to some viewers, so please use your own discretion if you want to continue watching this video. You will be seeing me dispatch some squirrels in this video, so if that's too graphic for you, if you don't want to see that, you can just skip this video. I hope you enjoy the video, all right? So I've been having a squirrel problem and I am trapping them and I'm getting rid of them. Around this time when it begins to get cooler, uh, the squirrels come out and they start destroying everything in the neighborhood. So they are destroying parts of the garden, digging up my onions, and then they're also like nibbling like the entire plant of my, like my, my chili pepper plants. They're like literally just nibbling like the, the stem off and just breaking the entire plant. And they're eating my tomatoes and they're just ruining everything in the neighborhood. And not only like my stuff, but like they're digging into my neighbor's garbage cans and stuff like that. And so I have a neighbor that's a little further down over here that's been trapping them this entire spring and summer. And so he's still trapping them and he is nice and he relocates them. But because these are pests and because I'm catching them on my own like area, uh, I have the ability to just dispatch them. And that's what I'm gonna do. And that's what I've been doing. There's two of them here. So I have two traps here. I have another trap over here that I'm gonna be setting up over there. Um, I already caught like two of them earlier today. And so, yeah, I'm going to be getting rid of these two here now. This would actually be a decent meal if it weren't summer. <laughs> you typically don't want to eat them when it's around this time anyways. And plus, in this area, all they eat is just trash. <laughs> like it's okay to eat them once in a while like I usually do for a video or so, but yeah, I don't, I don't make it a regular to eat these squirrels here in my area. But yeah, let's uh, get these traps set up again. And I'm gonna show you how I usually trap them and how I set things up because I've been doing this for like five years now. I've been trapping squirrels for about five years now and I see what works and what doesn't and reasons why like the trap would fail. And so I'm just gonna share a little bit about it. I don't really have like proper video planned. I just wanna make a video cause I, I've been in the gutter for a while now and September hasn't been the greatest month for me because you know, I was sick with a sinus infection for like two weeks and then I get like stung by like a hornet and had to go to the hospital and all that. It was just a big mess. So yeah, I just wanna get back into making videos that I love and just share the shit that I love and the stuff that I care about. I don't wanna let the negative comments affect my hobbies and what i enjoy doing you know because those opinions don't matter and so i gotta keep doing stuff like this and just keep doing it regardless of what people think of me okay there you go so this one here is set up over here and it should be good i'm gonna have a few more on the other side of the shed and so you'll notice the red solo cup right um what i do is I have peanut butter spread out in the middle or in the inside of the cup there. And I have it kind of just attached to the end of the trap here. It doesn't necessarily need to be sideways like that. It's just because the, the squirrels run around, they kind of break it off. And so that's why it's sitting sideways. But I mean, having it sideways like this is good too. But what you want to do is you want to attach some sort of container or something on the very end of the live trap. And you see this rect rectangular piece right here. This is the, I guess, the trigger plate or the pressure plate. And so when it's set, it is angled up when it's stepped on like that, 
uh, it will close the door up front here. So what I notice is the best way to set everything up is essentially to put it in a cup on the very end. So that way when the squirrel or animal comes in, they'll be messing around with the cup there and they'll be situated in a way where they'll for sure step on this. Because in the past, what I've noticed is if I just put it on the ground or just right here, um, and just let it put the bait just sitting right here, what'll end up happening is they'll kind of stretch over. They'll stretch over and they'll grab it and they'll take it and they'll run away. And they'll never step on that plate. When you have it in a cup like that, they'll sort of play around with it a little bit more and it'll cause them to for sure step on this plate and you will get a better sort of catch rate. But if you notice that you're doing this and uh, the trigger plate is not getting triggered and, and the cup seems to be empty or something like that. Uh, it could be mice because mice usually won't trigger this, but you'll have to look at the peanut butter and see if there's small like scratches and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm gonna get more of this set up. So one over here. So this is an excellent spot because they always climb up here and they're always in this sort of tree area and this tree line that runs all the way down through the neighborhood. <clears throat> so I always catch them from over here and over there. So I have a third one and the third one, I think I'm just gonna place it right here because I, uh, I don't know where else would be good. But yeah, right here, right near the garden here is good. But yeah, I'm so I'm gonna show you what they've been doing. But yeah, all of this that I am doing is necessary to protect the crops that I've been working hard to plant and grow. And the squirrels, they do this every year. It's an annual thing with them. And like, I have these magnolia trees on the property here. And uh, these magnolia trees, they had these seed pods. And the seed pods, every year, um, for the past couple of years, I've never seen the seed pods until this year. And uh, I saw the seed pods and I just left them because I wanted to see them sort of ripen. Because when they ripen, they'll have these red seeds on the inside that look really, really cool. And so it didn't cross my mind that squirrels would come and cut them off or break them off and take them. And so I just left them and one day, all of a sudden, they were all gone. Like not a single seed pod is on any of the magnolia trees now. And it's really upsetting. Now that I think about it, I haven't seen any of the seed pods the past couple of years, likely because the squirrels would get to them all the time and I wouldn't even have the opportunity to see them. And so next year, now knowing that they'll take the seed pods, I might cover them up with like, like a sheath or some sort of cloth or something just to keep them on the tree, you know, so that the squirrels don't take them. All the acorns on all the oak trees in the area too are just completely gone. And the thing about it though is they're all green acorns, like super, super green acorns that they're not going to eat. And so it's really annoying because these squirrels, they're not smart. If they were smart, they would let it like ripen. They'll let the acorns and walnuts, the black walnuts ripen, and then they'll like bite into it. But these squirrels are stupid. All they do is they'll think that they see food, they bite into it, they take the green unriped like uh, walnuts or acorns, they'll bite into it and they're like, oh, it's not good. They toss it and they, they ruin it. And so they're destroying their own food source because they're impatient and, and just because they're not smart. And, and I've noticed this everywhere that I've lived. Um, I haven't lived in many other places, but like I lived in Houston, Texas, and I saw this behavior also where they would climb pecan trees and they would bite and throw away all of these unripe pecans and it'll ruin the entire crop. And, uh, and then when it's time for like them to actually ripen, there's no more pecans <laughs> available because they've ruined it all already. And so, and then they won't have any food. And then because they ruin all of their food, they have to then start like digging in trash and eating all this other stuff. If they were intelligent, like the squirrels would actually just wait 
you know, and then wait until it's ripen and they'll have more than enough food and they won't even need to bother us, you know, they won't need to bother me and my garden and all of that. So it's a problem that I don't really know how to fix for them. And in, in order to fix the problem for myself, I have to trap, catch and kill them. I'm gonna set up another trap right here. So when I was setting up the trap over there and I was just standing there putting my gloves on, I'm not sure if you were able to hear it or not, but there was a uh, fire detector alarm going off and it was coming from my neighbor. Uh, the fire detector alarms go off almost daily. It's like a group home or something like that and there's a lot of smokers in that home and I can literally hear the smoke detector alarm go off daily. And it's not only there, which is really strange. Apparently my neighborhood has a lot of like group homes or something like that, or like those homes where many different families or people live together and uh, I don't really know the laws and regulations regarding it in Minnesota or even in my city. I hear fire detector alarms go off constantly. Not, not just in that home, but like everywhere in my neighborhood. Either there's a lot of smokers here or they just all suck at cooking and they're burning all their food and <laughs> getting all of this, uh, like these smoke detectors to go off but it's so weird and annoying. And it's a trigger for me because uh, Raven doesn't like that sound and it actually scares her. I think it happened because um, back when we were in Houston, Texas, one time there was like a smoke or something like that or vapor from uh, uh, the shower and the smoke detector went off. Yeah, it was really loud <laughs> and it was scary and Raven, ever since then was scared of the sound of smoke detectors and even that beep that that like that warning beep when you hear like low battery i absolutely hate that beep whenever i'm watching like tiktok videos and stuff like that and i'm scrolling through sometimes you would hear that beep in the background uh, of somebody's video because they don't uh, change their batteries and their smoke detector. And even that sound from my phone scares Raven. And so she like gets scared and then she uh, starts having anxiety and she comes to me and then she starts shaking sometimes. Um, and then she just starts worrying and stuff. And she acts as if there was like a huge thunder <laughs> storm <laughs> that just happened or something like that. And so I don't like that sound anymore. And so it's triggering. And so whenever I hear it or whenever, like it's very, very faint even, I can, I can tell and I can hear it. I know that it's going on. Like right now I can hear, <laughs> oh my God. Right now I can hear another one going off, but not at that house, but at a different house somewhere in the neighborhood. It's very, very faint, but I can hear it. <laughs> all right so right here all of that right there are my uh, chili peppers i'm gonna go do a close-up on all of them i can go like this yeah so these are thai chili peppers and i think this one right here is just the standard one and then i have a few others like this here these are like the giant thai chili peppers and they're really big and then you can see them all hanging around. See, these are all Thai chili peppers. But you will start seeing another chili pepper that I have growing here. I'm not, see I'm not sure if I can get it to focus right, but let's see here. This right here. Yeah, so you can see that. And then you can probably see this. Yep, right here. And then this. So this plant here. So this chili pepper plant right here is uh, called the lemon drop. 
And the problem that I am running into right now is the fact that it is not ripening. Um, these are supposed to turn yellow, um, like a bright, bright yellow, and it is gorgeous. Um, and because it's getting cold now, um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to start, I don't know if it's going to ripen. But right now I am very scared that these stupid squirrels are going to come and eat these. Or not really eat them, but just destroy the plant. Because in the past, what they do is they come up to the base of the plant and they'll start nibbling. Oh, oh, I just caught a squirrel. Holy crap, just caught a squirrel. Look at that. I'm not sure if the, the mic was able to catch the sound. Oh my God, I cannot believe that. <laughs> I <laughs> caught another squirrel while filming. There you go. That's squirrel number five. So yeah, doing this is necessary at least for my situation here, because I spent so much time caring for these plants, you know, to grow. Um, and uh, they're coming along and just like destroying them. They've been eating the tomatoes that I have too, like the ripe ones. They're leaving anything that's green alone. So I think, so I think my chili peppers, the reason why they haven't touched them is because they're green. Uh, but it's also because it hasn't gotten that cold just yet either. Um, in the past, I do recall like them destroying my pepper plants too. And I worked so hard to, to grow them. And these pepper plants, they don't grow very well in Minnesota. And uh, they rarely ripen. And so like the fact that like squirrels would come along and like kill them and not even eat them is really really annoying and so uh gotta get rid of them somehow and it's really hard to like coexist with these squirrels like um there's plenty of bird feeders in the neighborhood and there is plenty of food for these squirrels and yet they come and they bother like people who like have gardens in the neighborhood a lot of the people in my neighborhood are unable to start gardens because of the squirrels, especially the neighbor over there that has been catching the squirrels daily. All right, so I am going to hose this down. There you go. And there's plenty of peanut butter still in there, so I'm just gonna set this back up. <laughs> so yeah, I've been pretty much doing this all morning. This has been sort of my job this morning, but I actually am going to be spending some time with like a journal or something and just writing out a schedule writing out a schedule for the work that I need to get done and the things that I need to do because because for a while now I just feel stuck and I spent some time going on YouTube and also checking videos on TikTok and I just asked the question what do you do when you feel stuck and uh, I stumbled upon this video on YouTube that was really good and this woman that keeps preaching about being stuck is a good thing if you change your perspective and you understand what being stuck means and uh, she preaches and says our body is really good at identifying what we need so for example if you're tired what do you need if you're tired you just need more sleep right if you're tired you need a rest you need more sleep and if you're hungry what does that mean? If you're hungry, you just need to eat, right? And so she also gives like a few other examples too. But essentially, 
if you feel stuck, what does that mean? And, and her explanation for being stuck is that there's no more growth in your life. And so you're not feeling that you're growing. And when she said that, that really hit me. It makes sense to me why I feel the way I do. Because for a good long time now, I have stopped growing. I stopped growing in many different aspects in my life. I stopped growing on social media. Like I, I kind of plateaued on TikTok. I've been stuck in the 3.6, 3.7 million followers for a while. I've been stuck in that sort of range. And I haven't grown past that. Same thing with YouTube. I've been stuck at the 100,000, 100, 107,000 or something like that. I've been stuck there. Not only that, I've been stuck with my fitness, my health, and everything else in my life right now. My finances, even. I've just been stuck. And uh, I haven't seen any, like, positive growth. And so, I'm going to change that. And so I, I'm going to like structure things out a little bit more. I, I'm lacking that in my life. I'm lacking structure. Ever since I quit my job, I still am really happy that I did quit my job. But the problem with quitting your job is if you don't have any like structure in your life, at least for me, I feel lost. And I feel like I don't know what to do because I have so much time and because I can do whatever I want. And because I have w the ability to do whatever I want, I end up not picking something. There's so many choices in front of me, but I don't pick one to like do. And so I usually just spend my days doing nothing of importance. And so I'm going to be writing out a schedule and just making sure I actually do things that will help me towards like a goal or something. But right now I'm trying to build a system build a system that I can just simply follow. And if I continue following that system, it'll get me where I need to go and then beyond it.